Hello and welcome to this InfoLica webinar. This webinar is part of a series that show different applications of field analysis using the InfoLica products. Today we will highlight the Electnet product from InfoLica. It will be used to study the transmission line gear. Electnet uses a finite element sol field solver to analyze electric field problems. There are four types of field solvers in Electnet. Each is based on an application waveform type and one or more material properties. The basic results obtained from each solver is a field. The basic fields obtained for each solver will also vary. The basic field solver technology is for static field analysis. With this solver, the electric field and equipotential lines are the basic field quantities calculated and displayed. Since the sources are static, the only material property that is effective in this analysis is the permittivity of the, of the materials. The next field solver technology is a conduction analysis. With the conduction solver, the electric field and equipotential lines are also the basic quantities calculated, just like the static field. However, you can also examine current distributions. These distributions will be static, and the only material property that is effective in this analysis is the electric conductivity. The next two solver technologies involve more than one material property. The first is the quasi-static analysis. This is sometimes called the AC or time harmonic analysis. The solution is in the frequency domain, therefore sinusoidal oxidations. So the results will be phasor fields. The properties that are relevant for this type of analysis are the electric conductivity and permittivity. The fields that can be displayed are the electric and current density fields as well as the potential lines. The last solver in the series is the transient analysis. This solver technology is uses a, a field step a time stepping field analysis. And since it is time stepping, any source waveform is possible with this technology. The properties that are relevant for this type of analysis are the electrical conductivity and the permittivity. The main fields that can be viewed are the electric and current densities fields as well as the potential lines. For this today's webinar, we will use ELECTNET to analyze two applications. The first is a generic insulation string for transmission line suspension systems. The insulation string design in this case is taken from an EPRI report which defines this generic design. We will examine the insulator using two types of analysis. The first will be 2D, and the goal will be to look at designing the insulator. The second will be in 3D with the insulation string installed on a transmission line. And here we will be looking at how the electric field stresses are affected by the surrounding structures, hence uh, validate the um, design. Finally, a surge dresser will be examined for uh, within a simulated lightning strike. This analysis would benefit from the transit analysis. The information about the generic geometry for the insulation string and the results to compare to were obtained from two EPRI reports shown here. This is the geometry defined in the report that will be used in the analysis. This slide shows the geometry for the energized end of the insulation string. Note that we will also be looking at the results with a corona ring at the energized end. This is the geometry that is defined for the ground end. And finally, this is a full view of the insulation string as defined uh, in that report. The definition of the ap an application is not complete with some material properties. These are some of the dimensions and material properties that will be used in this analysis and not mentioned previously. For the last part 
of the of this uh, demonstration the the full transmission line uh, will be used in the analysis and here is um, the dimensions of the tr transmission line tower that will be uh, modeled in the uh, in this um, webinar finally uh, we also need to define the sources um, the report requires that the mid phase be at 80 kilovolts and that the top and bottom phases be at minus 40 kilovolts. This corresponds of course to an instant in time and so we will be using static analysis to examine these uh, the situation. So what you're seeing on the screen now is the ELECnet interface. Uh, the electric interfaces can be used um, as is to enter your geometry or you can enter the geometry using a DXF file. For example, to enter the geometry uh, from the, the interface, you can just simply use some of the drawing tools to define the perimeters and so on. There's various tools available, for example, circles, arcs and lines. Or, as I said before, we can also import a DXF geometry. So let's just choose a geometry here for one of the geometries. So you see here the uh, DXF file for the shed structure of the insulator. What I will do now is I will actually bring in the file as it was finished. So we see here the various components of our geometry. Let me zoom in here and describe a few of the structures here. So we have here the various volumes that are formed the uh, insulation string. We have uh, the end fittings. Here we have the high energy end fitting, the rod down the center, the shed structure, and we can go down to the bottom and we'll see the the ground end of the structure. Some of the other structures that have been added here are for controlling the solution mesh density these are um, typical for uh, solving um, finite element problems. And as you can see, we also have some inner structures and outer air structures because the field, these are required because the field will um, extend out into those areas. And so we have to all have elements in order to be able to model the electric field in those areas. So let's have a look at some of the results that we can get from this uh, this basic solution. The first thing is we have some global results that are based on the actual uh, solution itself. Uh, some of these are things such as the forces acting on bodies, uh, bodies being anything that is totally surrounded by air. Uh, we can get the charges on the electrodes, um, the voltage on the electrodes, and temperature if the, we have a temperature um, simulation that is performed. So if we now look at what the fields look like, let's go to the field tab here and update the view and we'll see our default field structure. So first let's have a look at the top around the energized end. So now you can see how the distribution of the electric field uh, stress is, which is highlighted in color, and the exponential lines, which are the lines that you see here. If we pan down to the bottom, you can also see what the electric field stress is around the um, ground structure. So now let's have a look at some results. Uh, we will concentrate on the energized end of the 
suspension string. So let's zoom out and then zoom into the suspension string, the end fitting area. And uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the results along the contours that are defined in the EPRI uh, document. The first contour we will look at is shown here in the EPRI document. This corresponds to this area of the of the uh, model and uh, we will extract the results along that contour so the results are shown in this chart. Now let's compare that to what we get in the EPRI document. Here let's concentrate on the uh, yellow curve in the EPRI document. If you look at that document you'll see that the um, shape and um, values of the electric field stress are comparable and the peak occurs approximately in the same location as with in the uh, EPRI document. Let's go back to our view again. Let's select the second contour now. Th this is the contour shown in the following view from the uh, document and you can see it's along the uh, sheath edge. Let's display that in our view and there you can see the view. Let's zoom out a little bit so that we can see the full contour. And as you can see, it goes along, it starts at the end fitting and goes down through the through the shed structure down about 300 millimeters. Now the results for this contour are shown in the following chart. So let's compare that now to the results given in the EPRI document. Again, you can see that the magnitude and shape of the curve is uh, comparable. So we, this clearly identifies that the simulation is doing the right thing. Let's look at the final contour now. Let's uh, get rid of this one here first. Now this, the last contour is taken along the rod center and as shown here in the description in the EPRI document. And let's now display that contour in our solution view. Again it starts at the end of the fitting and goes down 300 millimeters down the rod center and the result of the electric stress along that contour is shown in the following chart. Let's compare that again to what we get from the EPRI document. Again you can see that the uh, shape and values are comparable. Let's now examine the effects of adding a corona ring at the energized end fitting. Let me show you the dimensions of the corona ring. This is the page of the EPRI document showing those dimensions. The corona ring is to be placed in the following position shown in the uh, following image. So now let's see the modified model with the corona ring. Since it is a 2D model, we will not have to model the, the supporting structure of the corona ring. Let me zoom in to show you what I mean. As you can see the bar that connects up to the end fitting is not included in the, uh, the structure. Now 
Now what we have done with this model is to combine the the two parts of the um, end fitting, that is the end fitting and the corona ring into a single electrode. So let me show you what the properties of that electrode look like. As you can see the electrode is composed of the end fitting and the corona ring and its properties are such that there is 80,000 volts applied to the end fitting and corona ring. Let's view what the solution looks like for this configuration. As you can see, the corona ring is actually taking the uh, reducing the electric stress around the end fitting. As you can see the by the color here, which is a lot lighter. As we did before, let's examine the um, the um, electric field stress along the three contours that uh, are defined in the uh, EPRI document. The first contour will be the um, the electric field stress along the uh, outside of the fitting. So let me show you what that contour looks like again. So what we will do is we'll extract the field around that contour and the results for that are shown in this chart. Now in the EPRI report this chart was not reproduced so I cannot com show you the results compared to what was actually calculated uh, so the, the reported results in that, re in, in that report. Let's look now at the second uh, contour which is the contour just taken at one millimeter from the outside sheet. In other words this contour and the results are shown in this chart. First thing we note is that the corona ring has a tendency of course to reduce the electric stress around the uh, end fitting and the uh, shed as well. So you can see how it has dropped considerably and we can compare that to the results from the uh, EPRI report and we can see that we, they compare quite reasonably. Let's look at that final contour, that is the contour through the center of the rod. And this is the contour that's shown in the view now. And the results in that contour are shown in this graph. Again, we can compare to the results reported in the EPRI document. And again, we see similar results in that document. There are other analyses that could be performed with these models that could, would be part of the design process. For example, we could look at the fields for different corona ring configurations, or perhaps even different shapes uh, of the corona ring or different designs for the shed. Of course, once these analyses are completed and the design is set, we can also look at how the newly designed suspension string works in a simulated environment of a transmission tower. Let's have a look at the model of the generic transmission line tower proposed by EPRI. So here we show the dimensions of the trans transmission line tower. And we'll also look at what the dimensions of the davit arms are, as shown in this image. Now that we've actually built this model, let's have a look at how this uh, these suspension strings actually behave in the real environment. So let me bring up the model for this structure. Note that we use symmetry for this model. Uh, the symmetry allows us to model just half of the uh, of the transmission line, so the uh, it the, the 
symmetry planes right through the center of the transmission line and we don't model the uh, portion of the suspension on the on the right side it's on the screen here um, so let's have a look at some of the sections of this let's zoom in on uh, let's say for example that the, here's the area for the uh, ground wire you can see that all the structure is has a texture to it this is indication that it is a um, set to a ground potential uh, we also have the upper and lower phases and these of course are uh, are pretty well the same for all of them except for maybe the length of the davit arms might be a little bit different Now, in the EPRI specification, the uh, it is going to be the central arm that will be the uh, the one that's carrying the high high potential. The parts that interest are shown here. There is the ground fitting, as also set up as with the ground potential, as you can see uh, from the texture that is applied to the uh, to the surface. There's the energized uh, electrode, and we can see that from here, and it's formed by the phase conductors, the energized end fitting, uh, and the jumper phase connector, as well as the jumper wire. So these, all these are form the same part of the electrode, and its properties, as you can see, are set so that the um, voltage is 80,000 volts applied to that uh, those components and it applies to all of them. We also added some structure for controlling the mesh density. This uh, allows us to use a very coarse mesh outside of the areas that we're interested in but to to have a much finer mesh on the inside and one of these is this air structure And it has uh, it's used for controlling the uh, mesh density. So let me just uh, turn the visibility of that off so that we can see better on the inside. Now that we have this model set up, let's have a look at the field solution for this particular model. Uh, one of the things that you'll note once I view the fields here is to that uh, the fields will be displayed on the surfaces of all the volumes that are visible in the view uh, and also on slices. Uh, so first let's have a look at the uh, field view. You can see that we cannot see on the inside at the moment because we have an air volume. So let's select that air volume and uh, toggle the visibility of that. And so we, now you can see what's happening on the inside. So we can see the field solution on the surface of the of the sheds and on the energized end, for example. Uh, we can also view on slices, so let me bring up uh, some slices that we can view the solution on. So this particular slice is a vertical slice through the through the sheds and through the uh, conductor, including the energized conductor and so on. And the second slice here is a slice that it will be orthogonal to that slice. So here we can see uh, a line showing you that where that slice actually is located. So you can see the fields, the potential flux, and also the uh, the electric stress in that region. I'm going to just rotate this around here, uh, and uh, we'll bring this back into view. Oops. so that we can now have a look at the same area that we were interested in. Let me zoom in first. So let's look at the uh, contours that were uh, previously defined in the EPRI uh, document. Uh, so let's start by viewing the first field er extraction area. So we want to extract the field around the contour there so let's zoom in a little bit here and you can see that it lies on that plane and the result for that is shown in this uh, diagram 
We can also compare that to what was given in the results document from EPRI. One thing that you'll note is that the maximum field value in this view is actually quite a bit higher than the one that is in the uh, EPRI document. One of the reasons this is happening is because now we have interaction between the various um, the other um, phases of the uh, transmission line and that's actually bringing up the maximum value here. So that's our first case. Let's now look at the second um, contour that we want to look at. So let me get, get rid of this from the, from the view and uh, we'll bring up the contour along the sheath so you can see that in the view here let me just zoom up here so we can see that that's through at a distance from from the sheath going through the various sheds and the result is shown in this uh, chart again we can compare this to what we what was obtained in the EPRI document and again we can see that the um, at least on the energized end which is this section the field uh, the field stress is a lot higher in this in the uh, true 3d situation than it is in the uh, uh, for the 2d or the uh, uh, single um, string structure finally let's have a look at what happened in the rod rod center so let me just uh, draw the contour so that goes through the rod center uh, let's turn some of these things from the view turn them off so that we can see on the inside okay um, let me just choose this we'll also choose the slices here so that the So now we we see we're right down the center here. I'll just try rotating this a bit. Zoom out in and and zoom in on that area. Okay, so it's right down the rod center, and the result of the fields extracted from that contour are shown here in this chart. And again, we can compare that to what we have was obtained in the uh, pre-document for the final part of this analysis of so the suspension system for the transmission lines we will look at the at the new model with the convert owner rings attached to the energized end of the string i have loaded this model into lugnet and we will zoom into the area that we're interested in First, we'll rotate the view for better viewing, and we'll zoom in. So now we can see uh, a good view of the uh, the end. Let's have a look at what's composed of the middle electrode, which is that object there. So it's part of the corona ring, the energized string and of course the phase wind uh, the phase wires for that uh, that phase and the, again if you look at the properties electrode has like 80,000 80, volts applied to it so let's view the solution for this model now as we can see the uh, corona ring seems to be doing its job uh, the highest stresses stresses are on the corona ring and not so much on the energized fitting and so uh, this would protect the whole structure from uh, uh, lightning strike or high voltages so let's have a look at how that actually works out in terms of um, field stresses along the contours that we defined previously first let's have a look at the um, area around the end string and the end fitting rather and you can see that the uh, maximum field is actually quite a bit lower and if we compare that with the 
um, calculated values and reported in the uh, every document uh, we can see the shape of that field also we want to look along the edge of the sheath and so if we extract the uh, results of from that sheath edge you can see now that the area which had very high electric stress before which was right over here is now much 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 smaller and uh, so it's definitely going to act as a protection for the insulation again we can compare this to the uh, results from the EPRI uh, report finally we want to look at the contour along the rod center and uh, these are the results from that contour again as you can see the results show that the uh, field is very very much reduced in the rod center due to the presence of that corona ring and again we want to compare that to the results from the EPRI report The last application we'll, we'll examine today is the surge arrestor. In particular, we'll be looking at the surge arrestor under lightning strike conditions. I have brought up the surge arrestor on the screen here, and you can see the different parts of it. We have the antenna and base, which are conducting. These will form our high voltage electrode. We have the resistor stack, which is going to um, act as a variable resistor to the uh, voltage and down at the bottom of course we have the pedestal which is also going to be set to ground potential. We will be looking at a 2D model of the surge arrestor today um, but it could easily have been a 3D. Um, this is 2D because the uh, symmetry of the cross section is basically symmetric uh, by revolution so any plane cut through it at any angle will look exactly the same. So let's have a look at the parts of the model. Uh, the first thing is the resistor that we want to look at and the resistor has the properties of what we call resistive material here. If we go to the material tab here and have a look at the properties of this material we'll see that it has a re electric resistivity about one ten thousandth of a uh, ohm meter and a primitivity of 800 in this case. Uh, this could just as well have been a, a nonlinear um, material with with uh, with potential, and that would have worked just as well. If we go back now to the electrode, let's have a look at how we define the electrode. First, though, I would like to show you what the voltage should look like. Uh, here we have the a model of a standard lightning pulse so we have the equation for the voltage and I, this is the waveform that will enter so I've actually taken that data and put it into the model so let's have a look at the electrode properties and electrode properties is specified using waveform and as you can see, let's just stretch this out here so we can see it a little bit better. You can see it, it matches what we had entered um, from the spreadsheet. So the data was taken from the spreadsheet. Now, since this waveform is uh, nonlinear or non sinusoidal, um, we need to use a transient solver to um, solve this problem. If you remember, the transient solver also takes into consideration both the conductivity and the permittivity of the material. And we will look at how this um, will operate uh, under those conditions. So let's have a look at how we set up the problem for solution. So let's have a look at the transient options. Now the transient options give us the time steps so we'll go from zero 
to 0.1 milliseconds and we'll use 1.1 microsecond time steps. Now this could have been um, a user defined um, set of points if we had wanted to but we'll just use it as a fixed range here. So let's have a look at what the solution for this uh, problem looks like. First, uh, we'll s have a look at the fields. As you can see, the fields actually vary as a function of time. So we'll be able to look at various time steps here and have a look at what the solution looks like. So let's just arbitrarily choose a few fields here. So here is uh, one at uh, 36 microseconds, 36.1 microseconds and one a much later time here note that it's not very um, doesn't give you us much, much information because the range here has been automatically resized for the various uh, time steps so um, our uh, view doesn't uh, tell you much however if we were to look at a um, an animation of this, as you can see, we can generate animation from this. Then we will get a much better feel for what's ha what's happening. Let me just uh, show you what this uh, this animation that I've, I've generated. And as you can see, you can see by the the way the ec potentials are behaving that the uh, potential is actually coming down as a function of time. So we'll let it go through a full cycle here. Let me just start that over again. There we had the where the voltage actually built up and now it's coming back down again very slowly. We'll see it Let me just speed this up a little so that we can get a better feel for what happens here. We'll start this again. You can see now that the voltages are actually slowly decreasing. Of course, this gives you an overall view but we can also zoom in and have a look at the animation um, uh, in a smaller area. So now you can see the detail. You can see how it's now started down the voltage curve. The voltage is actually draining through the resistor here. Let me again try to speed this up a little bit here. So you can see how it's actually, there are getting to be fewer and fewer of these echo potentials. The smaller the number of echo potentials, the lower the, the electric field stress uh, shows. And as you can see, this is quite true. Uh, you do have, uh, some high field stress in the areas of corners here. You can see now that we have a much fewer echo potential line so the voltage and electric stress are down very much lower now. There are other quantities that we can have a look at here um, from the solution. As you can see, for example, we can look at ohmic loss. So let's just generate a graph of that so you can see how the ohmic loss varies as a function of time. Uh, we can also look at the conduction current through the electrode. Again, this has more or less the same shape as the lightning strike because we have a linear problem here. The resistance is uh, uh, linear with the uh, voltage. 
and so we're seeing exactly the same shape as the voltage and you could also have a displacement current now however we only see a displacement current over a very small portion of the cycle uh, within the first uh, five thousandths of a uh, five mi microseconds and you can see how it's actually just dropping very quickly um, down to a steady state value very quickly So to conclude today, we have shown you two different applications. Um, the first application was the um, installation string for a transmission line. Uh, we showed it under two circumstances. The first is uh, in the mode where we are actually trying to design the uh, structure. And the second is where we it's actually installed on a transmission line. And we had a look at how the um, various uh, voltages in various locations on the uh, installation string uh, varied as a function of the uh, voltage and, and so on. The second application we looked at is the surge arrestor. Uh, and we looked in this case the surge arrestor um, after um, a lightning strike so that we could see how the the not a resistive portion of the surge arrestor actually behave behaves under um, a lightning strike.